Diabetes has many important warning signs and treatment conditions, and if not monitored closely, these can lead to serious long and short-term complications. In the short term, high blood sugar levels, known as hyperglycemia, can make people with diabetes very ill and can even be life-threatening. In the long term, it increases their chances of getting complications of diabetes, such as amputation, heart disease, kidney disease, and blindness. In a very short-term custody situation, such as the one presented here, the key is avoiding the short-term complications of hyperglycemia and also low blood glucose levels known as hypoglycemia, either of which can be life-threatening. Some of the early warning signs of a person with diabetes who's experiencing hyperglycemia include frequent urination, increased thirst, high blood glucose level, high levels of sugar in the urine, and breath that smells fruity. When we saw the suspect was in medical distress, we knew we had to get him to the hospital quickly so that we can get him medical attention. The officer did the right thing by acting quickly when he saw the suspect was experiencing symptoms of hyperglycemia. It's important to treat hyperglycemia as soon as you can detect it. If you fail to treat it, a life-threatening condition called ketoacidosis or a diabetic coma could occur. In this situation, the best action was to send this person to the nearest hospital in a police vehicle. But every police department should consider ahead of time what is the fastest way to obtain medical help. In some communities, it will be transporting the person immediately to the hospital in a police vehicle. In others, it will be calling EMS. Mr. Johnson, we're going to take you to the hospital so that you can get medical attention. In Philadelphia, we recognize that diabetes can be a life-threatening disease if not identified and treated while in police custody. The City of Philadelphia has developed protocols for dealing with people in police custody who have diabetes. This includes identifying diabetes during a medical checklist to be completed as soon as the person arrives at a police facility. In the case of persons arrested for some summary offenses, we transport them to the district of arrest and try to get them processed and released within about an hour. In other arrests, or any arrest where it's not possible to process and release the person within two hours, we transport these individuals to our central police detention unit where they receive medical attention from an on-duty RN. Additionally, once a transporting officer learns that a detainee has diabetes, he or she may also transport the person directly to the police detention unit. As this situation illustrates, we've also set up a process for transferring a person with diabetes who is experiencing severe hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia to the nearest hospital because these individuals cannot wait to receive medical attention. As you've seen from these two examples, police will encounter people with diabetes in different situations. In some cases, such as the traffic scene, it will not be immediately apparent that diabetes is the cause of the individual's behavior. In all cases, it is important to identify conditions like diabetes that may require medical attention. Understanding diabetes and knowing how to respond to a person with diabetes, like me, will help you provide the person with the assistance they may need.